Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic to version 11.4. I feel this is a rather significant update because it includes two new features that many of us have been clamoring for. In today's video, I'm going to demo those two new features along with some of the other new features found in this, the latest version of Lightroom Classic. First of all, there is a considerable amount of new lens and camera support in this version of Lightroom Classic. In the description below this video, I'll have all of that listed there. Let's talk about one of those two new features that I'm excited about. It has to do with presets, and I know many of you are probably thinking presets. I never use those. Well, I think the main reason at least some people don't use presets is because you'll often apply a preset and it's too weak or too strong then you have to go in and readjust everything anyway. So why bother using the preset? Well, now there is a preset amount slider. When you apply a preset, if it is too weak or too strong, you could either dial it up or dial it back. For example, I have this unprocessed raw file. I'm going to apply one of the presets that I sell, one of the black and white presets called Alleyway. And you can see that's probably a bit too strong. Well, in the develop module on the left hand panel above the presets at the top you'll see there is a preset amount slider its scale is from 0 to 200 and when you apply a preset it will be right in the middle at 100 so if you do need to dial it up you could dial it up but in the case of this preset on this image i need to dial it back so there is a preset amount slider now there is a limitation let me reset this let me apply a different one of the presets that I sell, the one right above Alleyway called Across Town. I apply that preset, it looks pretty good. But you'll notice the amount slider is grayed out. It doesn't work. That's because the preset amount slider will only be available with presets that use scalable settings only. Now, scalable settings are most of the settings in Lightroom, you know, basics, tab settings, and stuff like that. But if a preset happens to use any non-scalable settings, then the uh, preset amount slider will be grayed out. Now, non-scalable settings include profiles. So if you don't use like the Adobe Color or the Adobe Monochrome um, profile, then you'll probably get this grayed out. Uh, convert to black and white, it says, which I'm not really sure because this one's converted to black and white and the previous one was as well. And you can see the amount slider was. So I'm not sure what that means or why that is like that. Uh, in detail, if a preset uses a, you know anything other than the default radius, detail, or masking in the sharpening section, then that is non-scalable. So that will disable the amount slider. Um, also, like lens corrections and transform adjustments aren't scalable. In effects, the grain amount, um, amount is scalable, but the size and roughness, if they're off the default positions, those aren't scalable. So those non-scalable um, adjustments will cause the amount slider to not be active. But still, even with that, I think this is a welcome addition. Many of us have been wanting this for some time, particularly those like me that sell presets. Now, more of my presets will be effective on my customers' images. So that's probably, maybe I'm biased. But I think if you do use presets, you're going to welcome that amount slider. Now, the other thing has to do with masking. And I'm really excited about this one, all right? So I'm going to go put up the masking tool. And on this image, um, let's select the sky. All right, so we have a perfect sky selection. Now let's add to this selection. I'm going to add the subject which is the lighthouse right and it added some of the land i want to add more i want to add the rest of the land so i'm going to add and i'm going to add a brush okay so i'm going to take my brush and i'm going to brush in the rest of the land so basically i have everything selected except the water now in the past if i try to invert it like i'll just click right here and it really doesn't invert it just inverts the original sky it doesn't invert those other adjustments well now you'll notice first of all you'll notice there's new kind of bigger icons here and if you hover over them you'll see what you did 
you know, what each of them entail. But the mask, the overall mask, these three dots, click there and invert mask one. Now it inverts the entire mask. So the original sky mask, the addition of the subject, and the addition of the brush all got inverted together. In the past, as I mentioned, it didn't do that. And I often got emails from people telling me that they're trying to invert a mask and it's driving them crazy. Well, you weren't crazy. It's just the way Lightroom worked at that time. Now, though, you could invert an entire mask, and I'm really excited about that. So that is a welcome new addition to uh, this version of Lightroom. Now, I want to show you something else with masking, but let's do just a quick adjustment on this uh, image here. So I'm just going to do a quick, 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 quick adjustment. All right, so we're going to do... Now it still has to do with masking. I'm just doing an adjustment here. All right, just a quick adjustment. All right, so we're adjusted uh, there. Now I'm going to add a mask. I'm going to go to the mask and I'm going to select the sky. All right, and I'm going to add some clarity and some contrast. I'm making a real dramatic sky, right? And there. All right, so then I'm going to create a new mask. So I'm adding a second mask and I'm going to select the subject. And with the subject, I want to make it just a touch brighter. And I want to add some texture and some clarity, maybe even a little brighter. Okay. All right. So I added two different masks, one for the sky and one for the subject. All right. Now, done with this image totally. Let's go to the next image that's a non-processed RAW file. And you can see this is the same scene. It's just zoomed in more. I'm going to copy those previous adjustments I just did by clicking on this previous button. Now in the past, you'll see it's called AI mask. In the past, it would just put the sky mask in the same exact position in the image as it was in the original image. It would put the subject mask in the same exact position when you copied settings. Now, it actually finds the sky in the new image and it finds the subject in the new image. And if you did a brush stroke, it would put that in the exact spot in the new image. So it's like a smart mask now when you copy the adjustments. And I, 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 I probably should be really excited about this too because this is a real time saver. And you could include this in presets now. So if I create a preset, like I create this as a preset, but someone uses it on a image that doesn't have a lighthouse, the subject in their image happens to be a sailboat. Well, the adjustment, the mask will get applied to the sky in their image, no matter how the sky is configured. Maybe they don't have the horizon line right here. They have it way down here, or way up here, something like that. It will find the sky in their image properly, and it will find this new subject properly and adjust accordingly. So that is, uh, I guess, a significant new update three. I really do uh, like about that uh, in this. Now, if you happen to apply a preset during your import process, during that uh, process, it won't update the mask accordingly. It will apply the mask as it was on the original image. Only when you're applying the a preset during import but when you open up the mask tool on that imported image right here there'll be a button and it will say to update update the mask and you'll click that button and then it will update the mask in the proper way so it just doesn't do it automatically you have to click a button so there's that just wanted to mention that now another new feature, um, this I guess some people like, is has to do with crop overlays. So open up the crop tool, and you can see I, I default to the rule of thirds. If I hit the O key on my keyboard for overlay, you can see there's a new crop overlay. This is called fifths. So you can see there's fifths. And if you keep hitting the O to, you know, you have all the other overlays you always, hit, always had if you keep hitting the O key. And I'll go back to my rule of thirds. So that is another uh, new feature in this version of Lightroom Classic. And I think that's everything I'm going to cover in this video. But uh, again, in the description below this video, 
I'll have all the new camera and lens support found in this version of Lightroom Classic. And um, I'm just excited. I just think it's, again, some features, welcome features that many of us have been looking for. And I think many of you, even if you don't use presets, I think you'll be happy about the new masking that's uh, the new masking updates found in this version of Lightroom Classic. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>